It's a great delight to be with you and uh, to participate in this week of uh, exploring uh, the Christian faith in Islam and what it means for the two communities to be engaged with each other in peacemaking ways and what it means for the Christian church to be faithful to its calling in Christ um, in the engagement with, with Islam. So I'm looking forward very much to these, to these days with you. Um, several years ago, I was invited by the Muslim Student Association uh, in the United Kingdom to uh, come to the United Kingdom for six major dialogues, five in United Kingdom universities, and the first dialogue was at the Central London Mosque. Um, when I arrived at Heathrow Airport, I asked my hosts, why have you invited me to come? And they said, well, it's because of your books. And I'm delighted that I think two of my books will be here in Russian for use in this class. But they said, it's because of your books. Well, I said, what is it in my books that you see that has led you to invite me to come? There's many people write books. Well, they said, it's because in your books we see two things about you. First, you love and respect Muslims. And secondly, they said, you're committed to Jesus Christ. That's why we've invited you to come. After the first dialogue, which was in the central London mosque, the mosque filled with people that night. I suppose 400 were there, even people standing in the aisles. A three-hour very intense discussion with a noted Muslim theologian. Uh, the next day, he said to me, Last night, you confessed the gospel with clarity, and we all listened with deep attention and respect. Nobody clenched their fist and said, Allahu Akbar, and nobody left the auditorium. They all stayed and listened carefully. He said, do you know why? I said, why? He said, because you love and respect us. If you would not respect us, we would not have been ready to listen to what you have to say. And I said, thank you for sharing that about me, because that's the kind of person I want to be. My life motto, which will help to inform the way in which we look at the issues in this seminar, my life motto is taken from 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Be clear about that. We as disciples of Jesus confess that he is Lord. The next sentence in that verse. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Be ready with clarity to confess why we believe in Jesus as Lord, to those who ask us questions. And the last sentence, but do this with gentleness and respect. Those three principles, confess with clarity that Jesus is Lord, be ready to give account of the hope that is within you, but do this with gentleness and respect. Those three principles are my guiding principles. And those are the principles we will be bringing into these sessions this week. Um, verse 14 there in 1 Peter 3 uh, goes on to says, but don't be afraid. Oftentimes Christians and Muslims are afraid to talk with each other about their faith. And here we see the admonition, do not be afraid. And I hope that this seminar will equip us in ways that help us to have a gentle confidence as we engage with Muslims in conversations about faith. I hope that that will be true. So those are the four principles by which we will, we will, we will um, look at this course these days together. Um, and I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm committed to Jesus as Lord and Savior. That is the center of my life. He is the center of my life. And so as I engage with Muslims, 
I do engage with Muslims as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus. I seek to understand Islam as deeply as is possible. I have had many hundreds of conversations with Muslims. Many times I sit in the mosques with Muslims and have conversations with them. Many of my dear, dear friends are Muslims. And I seek to listen to what they believe and why Islam is so attractive to them. And in this seminar, I want to try to reflect what I've heard, what I've learned from Muslims about the essence of Islam. I will do the very best I can to represent Islam clearly as it really is, as Muslims want it to be, as Muslims believe it to be. I want to be that kind of presenter. That when Muslims hear what I've shared, and surely many will hear what I've shared here these days, they will say, yes, Shank has clearly represented Islam. That's how I want to work at the issues. But I confess, I look at Islam as a Christian. You see, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And so there's no way that I can fully understand Islam as Muslims understand Islam to be. So I would do my best to represent Islam clearly, but I also realize that that will be not adequate. <laughs> I will do my best. I encourage you who are interested in Islam, learn to know Muslim friends and ask them what Islam is about. Learn from them. And much that I share with you is what I've learned from Muslims, you see. And also, for Muslims who may hear this class, uh, who, 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 who listen to what I've shared these days, if there are things I've said in this course that you feel are not an accurate representation of Islam, why write to me about that, because I want to learn. And I hope this class will be a learning experience for us, for all of us, and even for Muslims who may listen in on what we're sharing these days. So that's the spirit with which we want to work. Likewise, Christians who may feel that I have not adequately represented the Christian faith, be in touch with me, because it's as we listen to each other that we learn and grow in this commitment. Um, as we talk together, Muslims and Christians, we talk as people who believe we're called to bear witness. Every day, three times a day, from the minarets and the mosques around the world, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them, Muslims bear witness to their faith. God is most great, God is most great. Muhammad is the prophet of God. And then the prayer call goes on to say, so come and receive peace and well-being, come and receive peace and well-being, come and pray. So the witness is given and the invitation. Islam is a witnessing faith, you see. So is the Christian faith. Jesus has commissioned us, commanded us, to bear witness to the gospel, to bear witness to Jesus as Lord and Savior. We're called to be witnessing communities, you see. And so both the Muslim and Christian communities, as they meet each other, need to respectfully understand that both communities believe they are called to bear witness, you see. Sometimes that creates tensions. But we need to learn to bear witness in ways that are respectful of the other and faithful to our calling. And as we bear witness, we realize that we bear witness from different centers. Both Muslims and Christians believe that we can only know God through revelation. You see, the revelation of creation, the revelation of scripture. Now for Muslims, that revelation is centered in the Quran. The Quran is the final definitive revelation, and the Muslim community is formed by that revelation. So in their bearing witness, they bear witness from a commitment to the Quran as the center of truth. Within Islam, the word has become a book, you see. And Muhammad is the ideal example of what it means to be a faithful follower of this book. For Christians, what is the center out of which we speak in bearing witness to the faith that has captured us? Christ, Jesus Christ. For Christians, it is Christ, the Messiah. We will use the term Messiah in this class because 
Messiah is Semitic, and Islam is a Semitic movement. Muslims refer to Jesus as the Messiah. Christ and Messiah mean the same thing. Messiah is a Semitic term. Christ is the Greek term, but they mean the same thing, meaning the anointed one. So we will use the term Messiah. So the Messiah is the center out of which we bear witness. We believe that the Word has become human and has lived among us, you see. So for Islam, the Word has become a book, the Quran, the final definitive revelation. For the church, it is the Messiah, who is this Word who has become human and lived among us, who is the center. And the New Testament scriptures in the biblical witness uh, bear witness to who he is. Out of the scriptures that we learn to know who Jesus the Messiah is and are committed to him then as the center. So for Muslims, it is the Quran which is the center. Muhammad is the one who explicates through, 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 um, through his proclamations and, and his life what it means to be faithful to the Quran. And for us, it is the scriptures that bear witness as to what it means to be faithful to Jesus the Messiah, you see. But the center is Quran for the Muslims and the Messiah for Christians. And this means, of course, that there is overlap. There is overlap between the two, but there's also divergence. Within every convergence, there is divergence because the centers are different. You following what I mean? You see, for example, our Muslim friends say Jesus is the Messiah. We say, wow, we're together. You see, that's convergence. <laughs> Jews don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. Muslims do. So we're closer to the Muslims than we are to the Jews in terms of who Jesus is. You see, isn't that just wonderful? But then when you probe, what does the Quran mean? And what do Muslims mean by Jesus as the Messiah? You say, well, <laughs> yes, we're together, but there's also divergence because the Muslim understanding of Jesus as the Messiah is different than the New Testament understanding, revelation about Jesus as Messiah. So because the centers are different, there's convergence, but in every convergence, there is divergence, we find, as Muslims and Christians meet one another. And as we bear witness, Muslims bear witness to their faith, they bear witness from a Quranic-centered faith. And as Christians bear witness, we bear witness from a Christ-centered faith, you see. And so that is, the, that, is the, that is the reality with which we live, and we will be probing this reality quite deeply during our next several days together. We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world depends on all of us. We very much need and value your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit www.tvseminary.com. So that's just a few introductory comments. Um, now I would like to just pause for a word of prayer as we begin our sessions together. <clears throat> our Father and our God, we thank you deeply that you have brought us together for this week of study. It's a precious time, and we invite the Holy Spirit to be present with us, to guide and to lead. And Lord, I very much want to share Islam in a way that if a Muslim were sitting with us, he would say, yes, Islam has been well represented. I want my mouth to speak the truth and not evil to speak the truth in a way that builds understanding and respect and trust. And we long, Lord, that in our sharing together, we will be faithful to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whom we have salvation. And that as we speak and study together, the meaning of Christ and the gospel will become more clear. We invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, to lead our thoughts, to lead our words, to guide our presentation in a way that glorifies you and builds trust and, and in a way that equips us to be peacemakers and faithful witnesses for Christ. And Lord, we thank you uh, that you have brought it, that you make it possible for Christians all over the world, today as never before, to meet and to greet Muslims, 
Many of us in this room here have Muslim friends, and we pray that this course will help to equip us to be faithful in our interaction with them, to exemplify your love for all humankind, Christians and Muslims. In the name of Jesus the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10, 11. How to give to TVS ministry. You may give online at efta.org slash give now. In the description place, write Russia Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Or make checks out to EFCA. Write on the check memo line, Russian Distance Learning, account number 24109-0150. Mail to EFCA Donor Services, 901 East 78th Street, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55420-1300 or send your gift through PayPal for tvs.gift at gmail.com.